Okay, so I'm gonna start digging into this. My expectation is that once I pop this thing open and get inside here, that this is basically going to just be a regular plain old SCSI enclosure. And this is just a plain old regular floppy disk drive. And inside here is gonna be some sort of adapter board that bridges from SCSI to floppy disk. Um, I have taken this apart before, but it was years ago. I don't remember what was going on in there and I didn't go and dig up any of the pictures that I took from, from the time. So there, there could be anything in here. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to take it apart and then we'll, once we get it apart, we can, uh, we can go from there. So this doesn't have any externally visible screws, uh, but it does appear to have little clips inside of here. So, and it's a little bit come apart. So I think if I just push something in there, I ought to be able to, that doesn't want to seem to help. I need to do the other side. Let's try the other side. seems to want to go. All right, so that side's good. And then, okay, so I think it's a part now, and the lid just pops right off. Put that to one side. And so this looks like a fairly normal, oh yeah, so, all right, so there's a plain old floppy drive up here and down below, which we can't see quite yet, is a adapter board that takes up like the whole space. All right, let's, let's take this guy apart. So when it comes time to start testing this, my plan is I'm gonna go step by step. I'm gonna, since this does appear to be a regular old floppy drive, I have a, a PC here. I'm gonna hook it up as just a regular floppy drive and make sure that it works. And then maybe I'm going to take this board out, but it, hmm, this, this plan may be off. Um, uh, take the board out and connect it to in this computer i have a um, a pci scuzzy controller hook it up directly to it as an internal device and then figure out how to power this thing um, and then finally hook it up as an external device just so that you know this is engineering 101 like each step of the way i want to minimize the number of things that could be wrong validate them and then incrementally add one more thing that could be wrong because if i start off just hooking up the whole thing with um you know the big adventure here is i don't have a power supply so i'm gonna have to fashion something um there's so many things that could be wrong you know i could wire the the power supply wrong and burn everything up and then like well it doesn't work what's wrong eh. like i want to keep that to keep that to a minimum Regular old TIAC. Let's see if I can get this arranged so it can actually be seen. TIAC FD55BR, which from the looks of it is just a plain old PC floppy drive. And then down in here, there's a little bit of an adventure. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. Let's see if I can get this apart some more of the way. All right, there goes the bottom. Okay, so 
So from the look at the oh, and it slides right out. The hell that makes things quite a bit easier. Hmm. So this is a regular old um, AMD SCSI controller chip. There were a lot of um, I know of a lot of Amiga SCSI controllers that that use this SCSI chip. Uh, in particular, a number of Supra controllers use this chip. Uh, these look to be some SRAM chips, a ROM, and an 8031 CPU. So it's just a little computer that... Uh, so this must be maybe a floppy controller. So it's a little computer that talks to a, has a floppy controller on one end and a SCSI controller on the other end. So... Huh. So using this same idea... An adventurous person could probably put together a Raspberry Pi and hook up a SCSI chip to it, or maybe even just directly bit bang the, the SCSI bus and make your own modern uh, controller board like this with a much lower chip count, to be sure. So I'm going to try to... So this is the power switch. Hmm... Okay, so power switch, how is that wired? All right. And then that comes out of there. Where's the power? Oh, and the power connector is directly on the board. So I wonder if we could just circumvent their whole power setup on here and just connect the, P the Molex connector from the PC in here. Mm. Seems like the kind of thing that either will work just fine or will destroy everything. <laughs> One of the two. But the other interesting thing that I was going to mention before that I forgot is it appears there is a header here for a second floppy drive in this so that's interesting it didn't really didn't really seem like there was room in that case for a second drive and um, perhaps the only thing more ridiculous than a 360k SCSI drive is two 360k SCSI drives but it's also possible I'll have to look up this this chip it's also possible that this could work with other kinds of floppy drives. So it might be interesting to have a 360K and a 1.2 meg or something. Um, I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll get to that eventually. Okay, and this does not look like it's numbered, but the red stripe is on the left on both of these. Okay, so that is numbered. All right, so I feel a little bit more confident taking that off and that I won't forget it. And interesting, there is no twist in this. So that's interesting. Uh, this may not be jumpered like a regular PC floppy drive. I will have to look some stuff up. So it's got the the D0 or the D1 jumper covered and then what is this jumper some other jumper it's hard to tell there's a bunch of labels around it and it's difficult to tell which one corresponds to this jumper so I'm sorry for having that in the wrong place so there's a jumper here and there's a label BC and ML and RY but I don't, hmm. Oh yeah, RY could be for, for this jumper because then this, this other jumper down here says IU, HL, HS. All right, so that could be, hmm. All right, well, we will figure that out when we get there. And then this. Mm. 
Come on, little fella. So there is the, um, <laughs> I went backwards and I'm totally doing this poorly. All right. So I'll probably do a better shot of this board later. Uh, but there is the, the whole board. Okay. All right. Well, that was fun. Um, it is basically what I thought. The only kind of surprise is that maybe this, uh, Maybe this drive isn't jumpered in a way that it will immediately work with a PC. Um, we'll find that out shortly. So let's just say things did not go to plan and quite some time has passed. But the floppy disk drive is hooked up to a computer, not the same computer that was here before. We won't talk about that. Um, and it's ready to to power on for the for the first time. So let's give this a go. And I haven't configured the BIOS yet for uh, for this particular floppy drive, so it may come up and yell at me. All right, let's see. Standard CMOS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Floppy drive. Uh, what is this? A 360K. Nothing installed there. All right, and now the real moment of truth. You can do it, little fella. You can seek. Oh, hey, hey. Looks good, sounds good. Well, oh. wait. Hmm, why is it still spinning? Why are you still spinning? That's maybe not good. Oh, wait. Try this. Let's pull this disc out. Oh, and it just. It just does not want to stop. Hmm. I was wondering if maybe because it had a disc in there, it was trying to do something, trying to read from it, and that was preventing it from, from booting off the compact flash card I have in there. But it seems to have. Uh, Lost its damn fool mind. I'm going to give it a minute and see if it gets tired of spinning. Okay, so I've let this spin for quite some time, and I figure by now, if the computer was going to move on with life and do anything, it would have done it by now. Uh, it seems to just be completely out to lunch. I guess I can try to just reboot it without a disk in it at all and see if that does anything different. Oh, that's interesting. It seems to have crashed. All right. Let's turn it off and because even the uh, hitting the caps lock key wouldn't change the caps lock light. And that's usually a bad sign. Okay, count up memory, spin and seek. Okay, so it didn't have anything to do with the disk, just something about this drive makes the whole computer go completely out to lunch. Oh, but the numlock key was making the numlock light go on and off, but not now. Hmm. So I think I found the problem. There's a little jumper right here and labeled next to it on the board is RY. And the documentation says RY is usually required for XT systems. And next to it, there's a single pad with no pins anywhere in sight labeled DC. And the documentation says DC is usually required for AT systems. So I think this is missing the 
necessary jumper blocks in order to make this work as a regular floppy drive on anything other than an XT. And I don't have an XT. <laughs> so the chaos of getting this stupid floppy drive hooked up to a PC for use as a regular old PC floppy drive just continues to slap me in the face. Um, but it spun up, it seeked, and it tried to do something. So I'm going to assume that the drive is at least somewhat okay. And since I don't think I can test any further on this front, which is pretty disappointing, um, I'm going to just move on to the next front, which is going to be trying to power up the board, the adapter board and, and use this essentially as um, an internal SCSI device on a computer. Now it'll be a different computer than this other PC that I have here because I don't, I don't want to mess around with SCSI drivers on DOS. I did enough of that back in the day and you know, I already did hard time. So I'm going to have to switch all of everything around now and, and come back to this later. Okay. So for reference, here's the, uh, the 360 K drive that I'm trying to get to work. And you can see that there's the, the missing DC pin here. Now here's a very similar flavor of the same drive. And there's, DC is jumpered. You can barely read it on the, the board there, I hope. DC is jumpered, and then there's an extra pin over here for RY. So technically, if this other drive doesn't work, maybe I could re-jumper this around and put it in there. Although, I think this is a 1.2 meg. I don't know. I'll have to... I mean, it's essentially the same uh, model number. So one is FD55BR and the other is FD55GFR. Uh, but I don't know enough about five and a quarter inch floppy drives to, to really know what those numbers mean or which which is which. But they're very similar. I mean, this is definitely a, a newer revision of the board in it, but man, they do look similar. So anyway, that'll that'll at least give something else to try. And I'm pretty sure this drive, well, I know this drive works in this other PC, assuming that it works, but I can I can test that out and sort that out if it comes to that. <laughs> so in tonight's episode of Let's Spot the Continuity Errors, I'm gonna pick up approximately where I had left off. It's been about another week uh, since the last time I was filming. It's the summer. Life has come up. Yeah. Um, but I'm finally back to it. Um, and now I've been trying to cobble together a something to use as a power supply. I have a little, little power brick thing that has SATA and regular Molex connectors on it. So I was just going to build an adapter to power this. I was going to just plug directly into the power connector on the board, but I chickened out. Um, I'm not sure if running power in where it expects power to be going out is going to be good or bad. I don't know. I don't want to mess with it too much. So the way that I've come up with how to put this power supply together is I took my multimeter and I basically went, just went through the, the pins on the back of the power connector here and looked for continuity on the pins here. So you can see that this pin, pin number two here, connects to the, uh, the tw plus 12 volt line. Pin one connects to the plus five volt line. And one of these two pins, I think pin five over here is the ground. 
yeah, is the ground. Uh, I then did a little bit of research online and found out that there is a compatible power supply or a power supply that people claim is compatible with this device um, that provides those voltages on those pins, which is which is good news. But also on, I want to say pin four back here, it also provides minus 12 volts. And when I was, as I've been looking at the board here, it doesn't look like this pin is connected. Uh, but then it also doesn't particularly look like the ground pin is connected on either side. So there's obviously another layer in this board where, where things are running around. So a floppy drive isn't going to need minus 12. And I feel like the RAM and ROM chips are not likely to need minus 12. I don't think there's anything on here that's actually going to need minus 12. Um, so I'm going to hope that it just works without minus 12 volts. Um, I looked at some of those power supplies and I found some on eBay and they're in the order of $30 plus $10 shipping. And I'm just I'm not gonna pay 40 bucks for a power supply that I'm just gonna use with this, maybe even only once. <laughs> that is just, I, I gotta draw the line somewhere and it's right around there. So I did a fairly shoddy soldering job um, cause that's the only kind of soldering job I do. Uh, connecting this, this up. Um, so I'm going to hook it up and try just powering it on by itself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and connect up the drive as well to see if it will, um, if it will power up the, the drive too. I just want to see what happens. And I'm going off memory here, but I think sorry about getting my stupid head in the shot there. Boy, how does this want to turn around? So that's pin one. I think that the drive was plugged into this connector. Um, so there's that. And then more that extra little shield ground strap. Um, the other thing to remember, if you're going to try to use a multimeter to figure out where lines go on this, when I was first doing it, it power wasn't going anywhere. And I was really confused. Like, how is there not continuity between these two points? And I didn't have any of this hooked up, so I didn't have the power switch on. So there was a, an open <laughs> bit of circuit in the way that was preventing what I was trying to do. Um, you know, the things that should be obvious, what is it that they say? Common sense is the stuff that you know right after you needed it. <laughs> okay, so this is off. I'm actually a little bit nervous. Okay, so that's hooked up, that's hooked up, that's hooked up. That is off. All right, so hopefully there will not be any sparks or explosion. Or, you know, if there are, maybe that'll be the most interesting part of, uh, of this video. So we'll turn this on. So we have a, a light here, so this is on. And then let's see what happens when we turn the device on. Oh. Well, the drive is spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. And it stopped. These seem like good signs. So it like spun up and tested itself. And and because it's not hooked up to a computer, it's not going to do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it back off. And I'm going to connect it up using the internal cable. Because I think that will be maybe a little bit more reliable. It probably doesn't really matter that much although the the external SCSI cable that I have here I haven't tested I know this cable works so I'm gonna hook this up and I will go 
going to pause the recording while I wait for this computer to boot up. Uh, this is yet a different computer <laughs> uh, than even the one that I had planned to use for this. This has just been like a comedy of errors, but what are you going to do? All right, so let's try going ahead and booting up the computer with the floppy drive all connected to it, and it's already powered on, and we'll see what happens. See if this Adaptex SCSI card likes it. Hmm. So, termination. So it's not hooked up to the fast Ultra SE connector at all. It's connected up to the old school slow connector. <laughs> so let's see what happens when it gets into Linux. Let's see if it, all right, so let's have a look here. Let's see if the Adaptec controller, so in D message, here's the Adaptec controller being detected but I see no evidence of it detecting any drives. What SCSI ID is this? Oh, that could be a problem. This is configured for ID7. All right, well, let's change that. Change it to four. Anything interesting happens. All right, so the driver loaded, finished loading, and still nothing. Okay, so I've changed things around a little bit. Um, I've gone with hooking the, the board back up to its external connectors, and I've connected that up to the computer. Now, if the problem was termination, there are big terminate, terminating resistor blocks that you can connect onto the back of these. And I know I have one somewhere, but I could not find it. So I just gave up looking. Instead, what I did is I've connected another device, a 250 meg SCSI zip drive that has a switch on the back to enable termination from within the device. I know that works because I've tested this zip drive with this SCSI controller before and it's worked fine. So this will be a little bit further test. Hopefully in this configuration, when the computer boots up, which I can go ahead and, and start while I'm jibber jabbering, um, it will detect both SCSI devices. They're configured for different IDs. Zip drive is configured for six, five or six, because that's all you can configure them for. And this is configured for four. And let's see what happens. Well, that's an improvement. It detected something. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but it was it was something. So we'll call that an improvement. All right, so now we're looking at the D message output for Adaptec. Wow. <laughs> uh, some stuff happened. Okay, so it detected the device. Um, wow. Uh, and got very angry. <laughs> uh, so it detected the, the floppy drive and it detected the zip drive on six and, and four. Uh, but when it tried to talk to the floppy drive, it got angry. 
<laughs> and wow <laughs> and continued to get angry so it created a device for it all right well that's that's interesting and then it created a device for it <laughs> and then it created another device for it F G H I oh my goodness so it hmm so it detected it but it looks like all attempts to actually communicate with it failed spectacularly hmm so i suspect that maybe this okay so there's two possibilities one the device is broken right the, this is broken which is definitely possible i mean i got it in a box at a hoarder's house so you know who who knows uh certainly i have enough things in boxes in my house that don't work so <laughs> this is the way um or i mean this is a pretty primitive device and this is uh, you know a pretty fancy um adaptex scuzzy controller it's entirely pos possible that this device's understanding of the scuzzy protocol is just so primitive and the adaptex is trying to talk to it fancy and they're not getting along um that also is is completely possible. The Adaptex SCSI controller has some built-in firmware, sort of a BIOS configuration screen, where various aspects of how the controller interacts with devices can be adjusted. Now, I played around with that for quite a while, trying to dumb it down so that maybe it could, could talk to this thing, and nothing helped. So, I just cut all that footage because, frankly, it was kind of boring. I did some additional research online after that and found that this device was made basically to work only with early 68K Macs that had SCSI controllers. And even on those, it needed a special driver. That kind of makes sense a little bit. This came from a time when removable media in SCSI devices wasn't really a thing and so I don't think some of the protocol or the standards had really been developed for it yet so there probably at that time wasn't any other way to get it to work. So without writing a custom driver layer for Linux which I could probably do um, there isn't it's unlikely that this will ever get working um, and that also explains the first computer that I tried to use this with had a different SCSI controller in it. And on that system, if you loaded the SCSI driver with this connected, it would oops in the kernel. It would like, it talked to it so, so mean <laughs> that it actually made the driver crash. Um, so at some point I'll probably dig out a 68K Mac. I, I do have one, but it's not, really in working condition right now. I'll probably dig one of those out and, and try to get it working just so that I could check that box and say, yes, I made it work. <laughs> uh, but until then, that thing is going back in the same box in the back where it has been sitting for the last five or six years. I've got a couple more videos coming up, so I'm going to be trying to work on some things and get some more stuff posted. Hopefully, kind of shorten my, my window a little bit between videos. Um, I'll see what I can do. Uh, until then, try to remember the good stuff. <laughs>